Welcome to our review on plant transport systems. So the first type of transport system we've got in plants is in the xylem tissue. Now we need to remember what's transported in the xylem and the easy way to do this is with the alphabet because water is transported in xylem. So W, X, Y, just go with the alphabet, water in xylem. So in addition to the water, the xylem tissue is going to transport mineral ions which are dissolved in the water and it will take the water and the minerals from the roots through the stem to the flowers and the leaves. Remember that when we're talking about water entering our plant, it does so via osmosis and the mineral ions are taken up by active transport. A few key features that we need to know about our xylem then. Firstly, it's made from dead cells. There are no end walls between the cells, as you can see in the diagram on the right. It's just a long tube, kind of like a straw. We've got lignin, which is a chemical that's used to thicken the cell walls, hence why they're now dead. And that lignin is there to provide support for the cells. The second plant transport system we need to know is that of the phloem. So the phloem is the tissue that transports the dissolved sugars that are made in photosynthesis. And hopefully we remember from our B1 work that the balanced symbol equation for photosynthesis is 6CO2 plus 6H2O makes C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Or your word equation, carbon dioxide plus water makes glucose and oxygen. Once we've made that glucose, then we need to be able to move it from the leaves where it's made to all of the other cells around the plant that need it. And the movement of those dissolved sugars and other food molecules is called translocation. The key places that our sugars are going to be taken to are the meristems, which is where they're actually growing. So this is where new cells are made, hence the need for the glucose, and down into the roots for storage as starch. The key features about our phloem cells then, firstly, they're living cells. They've got end walls, but they've been turned into a sieve plate. So rather than being a completely solid wall, what they've got are these small perforations in them that are the sieve plates. Now those actually allow the sugars to pass through so that they can be transported around our plant. And if you're looking for an easy way to remember that sugar is transported in phloem, then just think of good old Ben and Jerry's. Fish food ice cream packed absolutely jammed full of sugars, just like the phloem, both of them spelt with a good old pH. The last thing we need to know is about these structures called vascular bundles. Now the vascular bundle is made up of the xylem and the phloem tissue, and the location of these vascular bundles in the plant will vary depending on which part we're looking at. But the whole purpose behind them is to provide support in those different regions. If we think about the leaf, first of all, then what those actually do is form a network which supports the soft tissues of the leaf. In the stem, all of the vascular bundles are arranged around the outer edge, and again, that provides the strength in our stem. And then finally, in the root, they're in the center of the root itself, because that's going to allow the root to bend as the plant moves. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can state the function of xylem and phloem tissue, you can describe the structure of the xylem tissue and describe the structure of the phloem tissue.